Well, let's lay down our game plan here to be able to solve this equation. So I have all these unknowns and plenty of things to fetch. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the I'm going to define state one and state two to be able to find some properties from it. Okay, so I'm going to look for enthalpy one. Um, I also need the mass somehow, and I can relate the mass with the specific volume. So um, I'm looking for a specific volume on state one two. Um, obviously, I'm going to do the same thing for state number two. Specific volume, state number two. Okay, um, to be able to find something relatable to the specific volume, what I can do is I can relate the surf cross sectional area and the velocity, right? That's going to spit out the volumetric flow rate. And if I have that, I can then use this information here, or actually this one, either, with this guy here to find out what is my mass flow rate. Okay, and this is going to feed in here, which is one of the things we're missing. Uh, once I have that, um, I, I'm going to be good to go and calculate what is the velocity. So then with those two guys, I can calculate what's the velocity too, or velocity at outlet. Next up is the volumetric flow in the outlet. And for that, I'll need to relate the fact that mass 1 and mass 2 are the same, and that I have specific form 2, so then I can calculate back what is the volumetric flow rate in the outlet. Okay, so that's a game plan. First thing, define the two states, state 1 and 2, grab enthalpy and specific volume for both those guys, and then once we do that, we should be good to go with the step number 2. All right, so I have 800 kilopascals and 400 degrees Celsius. Um, let's go ahead and do, let's do pressure table. Okay, so pressure table, I'm looking for my 800 kilopascals. Here it is. So 800 kilopascals, my saturated temperature is 170. I am at 400. So this is a superheated state, right? So T is greater than T set at 800 kilopascals. So superheated, round table, keep going down all the way into the superheated table. Beautiful. Now I need to find point 0.8 pressure megapascals. Here it is, point 0.8. And this guy here, then I'm looking for the 400. So 400, this is the line I'm interested in. And I'm looking for these two guys here. I'm looking for this fella here and this fella here. So I'm interested in this value here. 0.38429 and on this value here. 3267.7. All right, those are the two things I'm, I'm going to be using for the other track. And then the other one is three, 200 kilopascals and 300 Celsius. So let's go ahead and track the pressure. 200 kilopascals, here it is. 200 kilopascals and the saturated temperature is 120. We are at 300, so th same thing, exactly right. T, that's not a T. T is greater than T set. So therefore, superheated. Okay, so same thing, superheated table. Here we are, we are looking for point two. So this is the one we're interested in for state number two. And the temperature is 300. So this is the one I'm interested in. And I want this guy here and this guy here. Okay, beautiful. So we, we've got the things we need to be able to move on. Um, less than knowns. What I can do now is, what was the second part of our game plan? Oh, okay, cross-sectional area. So we can combine the idea that cross-sectional area times the times the velocity is going to give me the volumetric flow rate. Um, this has to be meters squared, then meters per second, and multiply. So indeed, we need to convert this back into uh, meters squared instead of centimeters squared. So to do that, we get 800 centimeters squared. We note that every one uh, every 100 centimeters is equal to one meter, and then we can square this so that we can eliminate the um, centimeters. If you like squaring just twice, right? So, 100 centimeters, right? So, we need to divide by 100 twice to get it in meters squared, and then multiplying by um, what was it again? 10? Yeah, 10 meters per second. 10 meters per second, and that's going to give me the meters cubed per second flow rate of 0.8 meters cubed per second. Okay, this is super useful because now if I know how much um, 
volume is going into my nozzle and I know the specific volume, I can relate these two properties to be able to find out what is the mass flow rate. If you recall, the specific volume is just volume divided by the mass. So if we're taking rates on both ends, both per second, this is going to be equivalent to the volumetric flow rate by the mass flow rate. So therefore, if I'm looking for mass flow rate, all I'm doing is taking the volumetric flow rate and dividing by specific volume, all of which I have. So this is 0.8 divided by, what did we find? We found this was 0.38429. Okay, and this gives us, um, what did I get? 2.08. Okay, unit wise, just to be sure, we have meters cubed, here, meters cubed per second, and over here we have meters cubed per kilogram. So these guys go away, we're left with kilograms per second, not kilograms. Cool, so 2.08. Beautiful. All right, what up, what's up next? Now that we know the mass flow rate and because of the continuity, okay, so we know the mass flow rate too as well. So we could go ahead and find what's the volume flow rate right now, or we can continue to find velocity first. It really doesn't matter. It's up to us that are solving. In this case, since I've built a game plan like so, I'm just going to keep going and find the um, velocity now. All right, so I'm going to rescue this equation here, which is just the energy balance in our problem. Place it here, and then I'm going to solve for this guy here. So V2 will be equal to H1 plus V1 squared over 2 minus H2 minus the rate at which my um, rate at which my heat is leaving divided by the mass flow rate. Again, doesn't matter if it's one or two; they're the same. Okay, so you can choose whatever. Um, let's leave one because that's what we calculated. Um, so V2 divided by 2 will be, what is my H1? That is 3,267.7 minus, I'm going to subtract the H2, which is the other one we got, 3,072.1. These are both in kilojoules per kilograms. And then we also have the velocity one, which is 10 squared divided by two. This is in meter squared per second squared. And then we also have the 25 kilowatts divided by 2.08 kilograms per second. So we can see it's a hot mass in terms of units and it's super important for us to ensure that they're all consistent or else this is never going to work. Okay, so let's check the unit here. Um, we've done this a couple of times. We know that joules per kilograms is the same thing as meter squared per second squared. So to be able to have the kilojoules, we need to multiply the whole thing by 10 to the third, right? So this guy here, we need to multiply by 10 to the third. I'll do that in a second. So both of them are going to be in meters cubed, uh, sorry, meter squared per second squared. This guy here, however, so then this is plus meter squared per second squared, all good. As long as multiplied by 10 to the third. And then this guy here is kilowatts. And if you recall, watt is just a joule per second. And we're dividing that by kilograms per second. So seconds go away, and we're left with kilojoules per kilograms. So we end up with the same problem we have here, right? So we also need to multiply this guy by 10 to the third. And then the, all the units should check out, right? So summary of this whole mess is V2 squared over 2 will be equal to um, let's grab this. Maybe go to. Come on, help me out. Okay, so this, these guys times 10 to the third. This guy just as is. And then this guy here. Maybe 25 times 10 to the third divided by. 208. Yep, and the units all should check out. So then, once we do this, all we need to do is um, solve the math, and we end up with 
v2 oh, this is what I got anyways it's just two times a very big number which is one eight three six three zero oh, point eight and therefore v2 is just twice that number and taking the square root of that number which gives me 606 meters per second okay so you know a lot of numbers to plug in but as long as the units are consistent it should be fine again if you break this down right what we're seeing here is that there is a kinetic energy already on the inlet okay but this kinetic energy is being boosted by the difference in enthalpy so the you know the energy of the gas or the water in this case steam as it's going in and coming out there's a difference there because the outlet has smaller internal energy than the inlet so that's going to give a boost in the kinetic energy however not all of it is going to be a boost because you're also losing some of that energy in the form of heat so the boost is going to be whatever is the difference between enthalpy minus whatever we lost in the form of heat that's going to be summed up to the kinetic energy that was there to start with that's how we end up with 606 all right now we've done what are we going to find Cool. So we've done this, we've done this, we've done this. Last thing is, let's find out what's the volumetric flow rate on state number two. So on the outlet, we know the mass flow rate, we know the specific volume, so we can easily calculate the volumetric flow rate. It's the same idea as we did here. So actually, what I might do is just, let's copy this. Let's put it here on the side. And what we're looking for now is not the mass flow rate, but rather the volumetric flow rate. So I can calculate the volumetric flow rate by simply relating the specific volume and the mass flow rate, both of which I know. The specific volume we grabbed off the table, and that was 1.31623 meters cubed per kilogram. And I'm actually, let me just double check the number, see if that's right. 1.31623. Yeah, okay, cool. So that's one. Just ensuring sure you had the right thing. And I did. They're all good. And we're multiplying this by the mass flow rate, which we happen to know is 2.08 kilograms per second. Note that unit wise, what's going to happen is that kilograms go away and we're left with meters cubed per second, which is great if you're looking for volume flow rate. Um, this turns out to be about approximately 2. 0.74 and that is meters cubed per kilograms and that's the second part of our answer right there okay so you know this is a problem that requires you to really understand what's going on in terms of we need to know how to define states and pure substances you need to know all how to grab the property um, which is you know from previous weeks uh, you need to be comfortable with understanding whether it's superheated you know saturated mixture compressed fluid all those things um, once you grab those properties, then you need to be comfortable with the continuity equation, the mass balance, uh, energy balance, um, the difference between energy and rates. So whether it's, you know, just joules or watts, or in other words, joules per second, and then being able to balance everything out. So it's not a simple problem, it's not a trivial problem by any means. But if you've done the previous um, two videos on the other problems, you might be comfortable with this one. If not, please leave down below any comments or questions you may have, or if you need more problems like this one to be able to practice more, you can check some other that we left um, here in the channel. There are some others that we did from um, another university. Um, and if this video helped you out, consider liking it, and we'll talk soon.